Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about tumblers. And more specifically, we're going to talk about a tool that I've been working on that I think you'll find extremely useful. So this is my engraving placement tool. It's uh, basically a circle center finder. And then there's another little add-on here that I'm going to talk about um, that I think you'll find really handy. Uh, this is available as a set in my Etsy store. The link will be down below. But let's, uh, let's get into today's topic. So, um, tumblers are kind of all the rage right now. This is a uh, Stanley dupe, so not an official Stanley, but you can see this is a full wrap engrave. The engraved, uh, engraved pattern goes all the way around the tumbler. Um, this is a blank that I've removed the handle on, and then uh, this is just a different uh, style of tumbler that I haven't done anything with. But obviously, when you decide to engrave on a tumbler, uh, where you place that your engraving uh, is very important. Your customer is going to be pretty uh, keen on proper placement. Uh, being off just a little bit really throws off uh, the look of the tumbler, especially when you do have a name brand tumbler that has a logo already on it. It's really important that you either don't mess up the logo or you get the design centered around it perfectly or if you're putting a name or another logo here you don't want that to be, you know, over here, when there's a logo over here, it just doesn't look very good. Or maybe if it's you know a, a tumbler like this one or this one, um, you want your maybe it's a, again it's a name or an emblem or or even a full wrap. You want that in a in a particular place based on where the handle is. So this tool uh, comes in handy on where you know making sure that you place that properly. So the first thing um, that this that this tool uh, helps you with is just placing you know your logo or wrap or something um, based on that handle position so as you can see with this I can just line this up and now I know that my handle is back here I can simply mark my tumbler and just take a I, I'd recommend a mechanical pencil because sometimes you need a little bit of extra length uh, to get down uh, through this slot but as you can see here this tool has a slot in it I can simply mark my tumbler and now I've got a mark right there that I can drop down and now I know that this is the opposite side of where the handle is and so I can place my logo right here so that that is really helpful on a handled um, tumbler so you can see this one, I removed it. You've got these little metal tabs here where the handle screws in. And so again, if I've got something like this, I can simply line it up. And now I know the exact opposite. So that's, that's great if you need to find the opposite side of a handle. But what if you need to find where you are going to be, I'm gonna switch tumblers here, so I have, a handled tumbler here. Let's say you want to know 90 degrees from where your handle is, maybe the front or the back. So sometimes people are going to want a logo or a saying or a name or something. They're going to want this over here, so facing away from them. So whoever is looking at them, drinking out of their wonderful tumbler that you created for them, they can see this design. Or maybe it's more of a personalized thing and they want that designer logo, they want that to be over here so that it's facing them, you know? And obviously that's gonna be opposite if you have a left-handed customer, so you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to ask these questions. But so let's say you need to find out exactly where 90 degrees from that tumbler is. And that's where we're gonna spend the most of our time today. So this tool here fits right into this slot, and it'll always be perpendicular to this line. So it's going to be an exact 90 degree angle here. The trick is finding out exactly where on the tumbler that um, center point needs to be. And so let's find a few ways that we can do that. One way, the, the, basically what we have to figure out is what is the diameter of this tumbler. So there's a couple different ways to do that. 
Um, one thing, I'm going to talk mostly in millimeters today. I run my laser engraving in millimeters. I run light burn in millimeters. I, I run all my CNC stuff in millimeters. It just makes the math easier because I don't have to deal with fractions. Um, but so this is just a standard um, tape, you know, seamstress tape that you can get at any sewing store, but it's got millimeters on this end. So I can wrap this around the circumference of my tumbler and that tells me this one is 318 millimeters is the circumference. If you remember back to math class, uh, the circumference is pi, 3.14, whatever, times the diameter. So if I want to know the diameter, I just take that circumference and I get uh, 318 divided by pi and it's going to give me the diameter. Another way that you could do this, if you have digital calipers, you can just measure it. The trick though is there's a little bit of error because you've got those calipers are sliding in and out. You've got to make sure you, you're only going to be able to get the widest portion, but if you, if you put them over here, you can get a smaller number. You've got to make sure that you get to the widest point, um, but that's another method. Um, tried and true, you can, ah, I, I used the one with water in it, but you can put it on a piece of paper, trace around it, and then you'll end up with a circle, now on my wet piece of paper, but you've got a circle here, and you can figure out the diameter. Now, with this method and this tool, you can also use this to make sure, I know it's a little hard for you all to see, but I can use the tool, put these edges up against the side to make sure uh, that I am, I want to be this, e each of these arms should be touching the side. And then if you just draw a line right through the slot here, I'll do that here so you can see what the end result is. So I'm just making sure that the arms are both touching the circle and then I simply draw a line down through the center. Now I have, this is through the perfect center of this circle and then I can simply take my ruler, place it on here and it tells me that this is 99 millimeters is my diameter. So 99 millimeters is the diameter of this circle. So that's what we're going to be working with. Now, now that we know the diameter of our circle, what I can do is I'm going to use half that. So if you remember back again, back to math class, uh, two times the radius is the diameter. So if I divide my diameter by two, I'm going to have my radius, right? So 99 divided by two is what? 44, I guess it's hard math, 49.5, I think. Yeah, 49.5. So 49.5 millimeters is my radius. Now, what I can do with this little guy is the center slot here that's going to ride through this track is in the exact center of this. So if I take this guy and now the rough is fine, you don't have to, you don't have to be super perfect, but 49.5 is close enough to 50. I'm just going to make a little mark here right at 50 and it's black. A pencil will show up. I've also uh, used a white uh, paint mark. I wouldn't want to, you don't probably want to do temporary marks in uh, something that's permanent, but I can mark this right here at 50, just enough so that it shows up. And then what I can do is all I need to do is have that 50 line up with the side of my tumbler and then I know I'm exactly at the midpoint. So I'm going to, I'll talk uh, two ways that you can do this. So that was fun. Bloopers, right? So the way this is designed to work is you're going to put it on. You can see this, uh, there's a lip here. It's going to fit nice and snug on your tumbler like this. Obviously, if you put it on the other way, it can go back and forth and you're never going to get it right. But 
just like that. So now we know that this is on there. This can go either either way. You can either do it from the top and mark on this side. Uh, you'll just have to make your own little line on the back side of it, which is dead center. And then we'd go 49.5 over to the side. Or you can put it on the inside, depending on your tumbler. So you can see this one, I'm probably okay because this is pretty wide. If it was a narrower tumbler, I might not be able, just because it's going to hit these sides here, so I might not be able to get it all the way in to where I need it to go, and then I just flip it over and use the back side of it. But so now on this, uh, let's see, my mark is right there. So it lines up, and now all I have to do, and again, let's say I'm wanting to line this up with my handle. So now I've got that. I'm gonna eyeball it right there, so go straight through that side. So at this point, I can mark, I know my handle's here, I know over here is 180, and then using the slot here and here, now I've got 90 degrees in four quadrants, and now I know exactly where I can put the design of my tumbler. So let me give you another view of what we have here so that this will make a little more sense. So I've got the, uh, the 90 degree uh, add-on tool here upside down. So you can see right here in the center, I've just drawn a line. It's opposite of here. So if I'm doing it this way, okay. So uh, right here is my mark. So as I'm sliding this along, I want to get that mark. You can see right now it's at the edge of the cup. So I could simply mark, it's almost perfect for this size of tumbler. The other thing you'll see is that there's these uh, lines here and they pretty much line up. If, as I slide it back, you'll see those lines are no longer lining up with the cup. Um, and those are just kind of random. There are little uh, numbers uh, here and it's basically the diameter of the circle and I think it's 56, 66, 76, 86, 96, 106, 116, and 126. But that's the diameter from one side to the other. So obviously half of that is the radius. Um, and we, uh, we said our diameter is uh, 99. So it's gonna be somewhere between that 96 and the, the 106 would be where this would line up. But anyway, so you can see how it works on this side. On the back. Okay. On the back side, you can see here's my center line and it is just the exact opposite of that notch that rides back and forth in the slot. So that's my center line. Here is where I have drawn my 49.5 millimeter line. And all I'm trying to do is line that line up with the edge of my cup. And you can see that almost right here is perfect. So all I need to do now is simply grab my pencil, make a mark, hold that still, make a mark here on my cup, make a mark on the other side, and now I know exactly where my design uh, needs to go. Now here's another useful um, application for this tool. So this piece alone is also a circle center finder. What this enables you to do is you just place it on here, draw a line down this center slot, then turn it. Works best if you go about, you know, 90 degrees or perpendicular to the first line, but it really doesn't matter. Draw a second line. Where these two lines intersect is the perfect center of the circle. And as you can see in this uh, instance, I used it and I put my logo on the bottom of the tumblers that I engraved. This is a great place to test your settings. Um, you can put your logo down here, you could put a QR code. I mean, worst case, you could you know, do something, but when you, you, you do it down here, you're checking your settings. Oh, hey, this wasn't quite, you know, I didn't quite have enough power. I still got a little power code left. You can, you can see that the first time step up your power, or maybe it's too hot, you bring it down, and that way when you go and you do your final tumbler, you've got a good result. 
Um, but yeah, super useful to be able to find the center of a circle so that you can uh, utilize this often unused portion of a tumbler. Now what you can see is I've taken those marks that I made here along the rim and I've just translated it here because obviously if this was the cup that I was burning um, on my CO2 laser I'm not going to do anything up here on this stainless steel ring so I want to remove the powder coat so I've marked a little mark here I've got one right here which would be the front of the cup for a right-handed since this is the handle so if I'm holding the handle here then over there is my front so that would be my front mark uh, this is 180 degrees from my handle so that's uh, 180 out from the handle and then you can see this would be the point where it's facing the customer again if they're right-handed so now when I put this on either my chuck rotary or my four reel rotary um, I've got perfect starting places for uh, the engraving on this tumbler so now you can see the tumbler I've got it mounted here on my four wheel rotary um, with uh, the clamping system that I designed itself for this particular rotary. I'll also put that link in the uh, um, description. But so now if, my, if I have my laser and I want to start my wrap or if even, I've actually engraved some cups where I'll put my logo right here uh, under the handle. It's just a convenient spot. But now I've got my starting point right here and if I wanted to have something that's facing the customer right here I've got that point so obviously I could rotate my cup and I have my starting point right here now I know that exactly here this is the spot where I can put something that's facing the customer that could be their name whatever you want um, if I want to start 180 degrees from my handle now I've got a mark right there it's perfectly aligned and then again you can see here the mounting brackets for the handle again but if I want to have something that's facing away from the customer right-handed customer I've also got a mark there so it just makes things really handy so um, I hope you'll uh, maybe consider purchasing this it's pretty inexpensive uh, but it's a great tool there are a couple other tools that I uh, sell in my shop um, very handy for focusing depending on what machine you have I've got focusing tools this one is made for shorter focal uh, distances. This one goes from six to 15 millimeters. It's listed right there. You can see different height on each one. And uh, then I have another one that is um, for my machine particularly, it has a 18 millimeter focus height. So I have this one that's just taller and this one goes down to 14 and up to 23. So especially with tumblers, a lot of times you'll want to, uh, you don't want it to be perfectly in focus uh, because it uh, will leave lines. So if you defocus by a couple millimeters, that helps to reduce some of the uh, artifacts when you're removing the powder coat. So, you know, for me, I can just set mine at 20 or I can set it at 16. It also helps you, you know, find uh, a good focus point when you're dealing with uh, tapers like this. Now, one of the things that's really uh, special about these focus tools is they are magnetic. I have embedded magnets in here, so this will stick to, uh, this is not a magnetic material, but this will stick right to your laser. Um, I leave mine on the inside of the lid. It's just hanging, it's just magnetically sitting there and it's always exactly where I need it. I don't have to look around for some other focus tool. It's always uh, where I take it, I take it down, put it on whatever I'm cutting, I focus, boom, pop it right back up. It's always right where I need it. It doesn't fall off, it doesn't blow away, etc., etc. So both of these are available and uh, they're both magnetic. There's five magnets embedded in the bottom of this tool. So lots of stuff out there. Hope you found this uh, enjoyable, uh, useful as we talk through some of the tricks of the trade. Um, you can, uh, you know, again, if you like what you see on the channel, I'd, I'd invite you to, uh, to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can see all the new stuff that I'm creating whenever I have time to put out a new video. 
Um, again, thank you very much for coming by and supporting uh, me and the channel, and let's just keep on burning together.